Sometimes things go wrong when you are doing experiments. This is my power supply that I always use for my YouTube videos. I did an experiment. I wanted to measure the current in a wire and um, that uh, had the effect that one of the resistors in my power supply burned out. So this video is all about how to make, how to replace that power resistor. You see quite a bunch of them. They are kind of normal in a certain way. You can find them on flea markets or buy them in an electronics shop anyway. Uh, well, let's at first look at the circuit that I used, that I've used, and that's here. Uh, let's take some time to explain something. It's completely classical, nothing special, etc., etc. But this is, for instance, perhaps a good tip when you make a real powerful supply, 30 volt, 5 ampere, or 10 ampere, even 10 ampere. It's a good idea to use protective resistors that can limit the current in the circuit. And it's also a good idea to uh, hook them up here at the AC of the power transformer. And the good thing of it all is that you have here AC and for some experiments um, you need AC. And then you can take profit of all these resistors that can be switched in. And I've done that here on my power supply. Uh, of course, I've done. Uh, I've made the same circuit. So, for instance, one resistor 0 0.4 ohms, the second one 1 ohm, um, R3 4 ohm, 10 ohm, 100 ohm, 500 ohm, etc., etc. So you can limit the maximum current, and uh, that can save. Um, a lot of fuses and uh, many many headaches uh, when something goes wrong in the circuit that you supply with that uh, power supply. I always use a 25 ampere 500 volt bridge rectifier. Over dimension it also very very important. Well, let's go back to what I wanted to tell the way to make a power resistor. This uh, is at the moment the project to repair it. Two halogen lamps and here is a hundred watt halogen lamp that formed one of the protective resistors. It's burnt out. It's from a film projector and it's very difficult to get one. So I have to go to a more simple solution and that is the use of uh, halogen lamps. Also they are hard to get now at the moment in Europe. They are more or less forbidden by the EU because uh, their efficiency is too low, too much heat and not so much light. So LED lights are now everywhere and perhaps you can find these on flea markets. Anyway, when you can't find anything at all, the, uh, a good idea for very low value resistors that have to withstand a lot of heat is simply steel wire. Wind it like a coil and um, steel wire, it depends of course on the properties of the steel but it can have a resistance of say 0 0.5 ohms a meter. So when you find a meter of steel, wi steel wire, wind it on something and mount it. Of course, with these kinds of things, I don't know the exact name, uh, first uh, with a knife remove the plastic of course because the steel wire will get hot un under the under uh, certain circumstances when current flows through it of course the plastic may not melt and everything here um, 
uh, suffers from heat, so ventilation is necessary. Don't mount, of course, these power resistors um, in the direct, uh, directly to plastics, etc., etc. And that's also the way why you see here this piece of aluminium. That piece of aluminium go to mount it on the transformer. And then these two lamps uh, on it. Of course the aluminium will get hot. Anyway, that will be no problem. Um, you can see that I folded the aluminium twice. That also means that um, there is a, a kind of distance. It acts as a kind of a heatsink, a cooling plate. And these resistors here are all completely free, so uh, they can um, lose their heat very easily. But this is the, the lowest resistor in the range and it can get very hot when I for instance have an electronic circuit that takes 3 or 4 or 5 ampere. Um, they surely will get hot. Anyway, that was important. And furthermore, another tip when you want to um, use such a resistor in a power supply, use steel wire to hook it up into the circuit. The reason is that steel wire has a somewhat higher resistance compared to copper wire and it also plays a role and the transport of heat uh, through a, a steel is in a certain way bad. So when you have here a powerful current going through and you feel here with your finger say 5-6 centimeters from that resistor the steel isn't hot but the copper when you use the copper wire it can get very hot. That, were, uh, that was everything to say and furthermore I uh, salvaged a lot of these high quality isolation materials. This is for instance silicone and this is a kind of woven um, glass fiber and that are all high quality isolation materials for such a situation where everything can get very very hot. Here, here I also have um, beads of porcelain. They are also usable. Sometimes you can find them in a bread toaster or so. And then especially the old ones from the 1970s. That are all materials that you can use uh, in situations where your components get very very hot. To prevent of course uh, that the wire starts to burn. So don't use for instance this, these kinds of plastics. They will all burn out, start to smoke. Uh, when you um, for instance have such a powerful resistor that can get so very hot. And here you see also a part of a film projector with that lamp that I've mounted here inside that power supply. Of course that film projector uh, unit was made to withstand a lot of heat. So ventilation, you can see here that it is mesh. Also here from the upper side the, the heated air can go free out, can flow out. And that was more or less all to tell. You can use halogen lamps. Of course use Ohm's law. In this case, very easy. Here you see some examples of halogen lamps that can be used. I bought them on a flea market, 10 of them for say 3 euros. This is a 20 watt halogen lamp, can be used as a 20 watt resistor. Here 10 watt, very cheap. And you can see here that you can clamp these small copper blocks uh, to the pins out of that halogen lamp. 
and of course this can get very very hot and especially when the whole thing is wired with steel wire in a well ventilated area of course